I am, uh, want to talk to you, the parent, as a neonatal neurologist, to better orient you to ask what is neonatal neurology. So obviously you may have just received some devastating news about your just born baby possibly having some brain injury or definitely having brain injury. And the question becomes, if you have the opportunity to meet and sit down with a child neurologist, specifically one specialized in neonatal neurology, what should you be asking them? The first question should be, where is your baby's brain injury? In a high level nursery like at Children's National, every baby that's in our ICU will have some brain injury. So that is actually not unique. It shouldn't be scary. The question becomes where and how much. So different parts of the brain have different functions and some areas those functions are very densely populated, very important. So just to use an analogy or example, uh, if we were to drop a bomb somewhere in the United States, dropping a bomb over Washington DC would not be a very good thing versus dropping the bomb in the middle of one of our central lakes. Both of them are causing obviously natural damage, but there is obviously a high density of structures and infrastructure that's located in DC that would cause more problems to our infrastructure than dropping a bomb in the middle of a pasture or a farm field. And it's the exact same thing. There are different parts of the brain, some of which are very densely populated, and it therefore is very important, and can even with a very small size of injury, can cause much more devastating impact. And there are other parts of the brain where you can have relatively large size of injury, and still have relatively minimal or mild functional impact in the future. So the first question should be, where is the injury? And then the second is how much? Because again, if the injury is relatively small or minor in terms of size or intensity, even if it is located in a geographically important part of your brain, it may still not have as much impact. And this is why it is so hard for doctors, even neurologists, to try to predict how a newborn baby will do five, 10 years down the line because it takes a lot of patient experience to have seen a certain brain MRI where there's an injury in a certain location. And then depending on the size and intensity of that to say, aha, this is how they will do in the future in regards to walking or talking, thinking, behavior, sleep regulation. These are all different functions that our brains do broken down into different categories that we don't obviously think about in separate ways. And they're, but they're all located in one, two, or three different regions of the brain, and depending, again, where that location of the injury is will have different functional impacts. So this is also why searching on the internet may not help you understand how your child's brain injury will affect your child, because the stuff you will find on the internet are broad generalizations. They cannot uh, give you specific information about how your child's brain injury in the given location and a given size or intensity will impact your child. And so I often tell my patient, parents, if the internet information is helpful to you, then please, by all means, continue to look on the internet. But if it's not actually helping you and just causing more anxiety, to probably just turn off the computer. Um, because again, those broad generalizations don't help because what you want to know is what is going on with your son or daughter and not what broad generalizations are about brain injuries in premature infants or in babies with birth asphyxia because they don't tell you where that injury is, they don't tell you how much it is and how severe it is in those given locations. Um, so those are the two most important questions. Once you know that, then you, what you need the neurologist to explain to you is what do those different regions do? And so if they're doing their job well, they will tell you what functional areas you need to be worried that may be potentially affected in the future for your child versus what areas 
to not be worried about. I often feel like we forget as doctors to explain that you do not have to worry about this, this, and this. Therefore, unless you hear that, you are still worried that those are things that you need to be worried about. And if you happen to read or come across something on the internet telling you, well, a premature baby may have this and this type of functional problems, and now you're wondering, is that true or not true for your child? is to also have them explain not just what your child will be affected by, but what they are clearly confident your child will not be affected by because those parts of the brain are not involved. After knowing what areas of function are involved, you wanna know is it something that will be mild, moderate, s severe, or profound. These are words that you'll hear um, healthcare providers use. I personally don't like the categorization because I don't know what mild means to you versus what mild may mean to me. Um, but basically the way most doctors will use the term mild will be a little bit of injury. So not no injury, but a little bit of injury. Moderate injury is gonna be somewhere from some to not good. So there may be some injury where then you may have some deficits, but it may be transient enough that they will outgrow and develop past them. Not good amount of, of moderate injury is meaning on the more severe end that you will see some residual deficits that may be lifelong, but they may still be able to have some function, though not normal in those areas. When we're talking about severe, we're going from not good to bad. So these are kids who are definitely going to have deficits, who are definitely going to have lifelong disabilities in these areas, and no amount of waiting or time or therapies is going to prevent your child from having deficits in these areas. And then obviously profound are devastating, irreversible types of injuries. These are going to be devastating types of functional deficits where you may have very little to no function in these areas. And if in multiple areas of function, like motor function, seeing, thinking, then it could actually affect the quality of life when you have multiple areas of function involved. And this is what profound injury would generally mean to most medical providers. So this sort of helps then help you as a parent better understand how devastating or not devastating that injury is, what things you might need to monitor for in that first two years of your child's life, and what to expect or not expect, but may also help inform you how to make the best decision for your child while your child is still in the NICU and may still be having very severe problems um, because obviously we are all doing this to give your child the best outcome, recognizing that this is not something we can guarantee or achieve for every child. And if that is a quality of life that you may not find um, is something that you desire for your child because it's not something you would want for your own uh, self that you would not want to push your child through all that effort and suffering and procedures. So these are obviously very difficult decisions to make, um, but I think it always helps to know, um, again, how where the injuries are and how much and how severe, so that way you can again try to make the best decision for the well-being of your child. And these are the things you should be asking uh, from your neonatal neurologist.